All right, I built a tiny gaming PC out of an AMD BC250, and it's way more powerful than it looks. But one part almost ruined this entire build. But the big question still lies, will this thing stay cool or is it gonna become a toaster inside that little case? The first thing we're gonna do is remove the plate on the back so we can repaste the cooler after we modify the cooler. All right, there's the thermal pads. We're gonna replace those as well because I have some. Hopefully I have, yeah, I should have enough thermal pads. It's not the straightest cut I've ever done, but it should work. There we go. That thermal paste is dry. I'm glad I decided to do that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have enough thermal pads. Those still feel pretty sticky. So we're going to go ahead and leave that for now. But I absolutely am going to clean the thermal paste off and reapply that. So what I do, what I need to do is modify these fins here right now. They create um, like a flat surface and it pushes everything out. But I need to mount a fan here when it goes inside the case I'm making. So what we're going to have essentially is a fan right here that pulls air out of it like so and there's gonna be a case around it and then it'll we'll probably actually yeah we'll push air through it sorry and then the air will come out here so what we need to do is create an opening like these are here these are just bent over and you can pull them up and then tear or cut them off so I think, yeah, they're supposed to be able to tear off fairly easily, they said. But I think the best bet is going to be to get them up and then straighten them and cut. But I just need to make sure I don't damage the other fins. I think the cutters are the wrong tool for the job. I need a small pair of pliers. Because it does peel, but this is cutting it at the same time. So I wonder if a good pair of tweezers is going to be better if I get up in there and open it. That does work better. That's still going to be a very long, drawn-out process, so I think I'm going to report back when this is done. All right, the board is back together. That wasn't too bad. Other than taking the fins off, that was pretty easy. And then we have the, uh, the Arctic P12 Pro PST. Um, these were recommended. So then this will set on there. And what it's gonna do is push air inside, then it'll come out here. So I actually bought two and I was gonna run two 120 millimeter fans but as i was reading online they said it was better to run one because when you stack them you had this part right in the middle that didn't get the proper cooling and they said it ended up being about the same sometimes even worse so we're just going to run one fan uh and then i'm gonna i think the case i'm gonna print has around it too uh so yeah so the next step is we're gonna get the BIOS flash done, and then we're gonna load Bazite on it. All right, so here's where we're at so far. We've got the fan sitting on top. I've got my power supply plugged in. Uh, it's PCIe cable. I've got the ATX that's gonna be jumped. So right now I've got a power switch hooked up. Uh, it's a monetary switch. So that will help bypass it. Uh, I'm building a harness that'll plug into the ATX uh, 24 pin. Um, and then it'll give me wires that I can solder right now. This is kind of just a proof of concept type deal So we're gonna flash the BIOS and get Bazite loaded on it once I know all that's working uh, I can build the harness and then I'm 3d printing a case. I've got my 
PETG filament drying right now. So let's take this over. Um, I read online that HDMI isn't as good, so we're gonna use DisplayPort. So I'm gonna take it over to the uh, other test bench, plug in the DisplayPort and see if we can't flash the BIOS. Hopefully I don't brick it, otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me. Otherwise I have to buy some hardware to uh, flash the BIOS a different way if I end up breaking it. So let's just hope it works. But let's go ahead and get it on the test bench. All right, I've got my USB stick with the uh, new BIOS loaded up on it. Um, the GitHub documentation said the best way to do it to ensure that it boots to the USB is to make sure there's no drive plugged in, uh, which is easy. I don't have an SSD yet. The reason I had to bring it over here is because this monitor has a display port. The simple test bench over there has a like a portable monitor and it's HDMI only. Um, and the GitHub also said that didn't work the best. So we're gonna plug the USB in. Okay, USB in, we have a keyboard hooked in, hooked up, uh, display port. Uh, I've got the power supply. Nothing here looks sketchy at all. Can't possibly think of anything that could go wrong. I've got my detonator here, I mean my power switch. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna power it on and hope for the best. There we go, we got power, we got fan. All right, they said we'd be here in shell with the yellow text. We got exactly that, so far so good. BLK zero colon, enter. It's exactly what we needed. Flash dot NS. The H. Okay, reading the flash. So the flash worked. I didn't think it'd be that fast. The GitHub said to immediately power down, so it doesn't want to do it again. So we powered it down. Now it said critical, uh, clear the CMOS. And the recommended way, there's some jumper pins, but the recommended way was to uh, remove the CMOS battery. So we're going to disconnect the power supply just to be sure. It's kind of debating if I want to pull the pin on this or remove the power cable, but I think we're just going to remove the pin here, take the power supply out of the equation. Then we are going to remove the CMOS battery. All right, CMOS battery is removed. We're going to give it 60 seconds. All right, we're gonna put the CMOS battery back in. We're gonna plug our power back in. That fan does not sound healthy and it's brand new. Uh, just like regular computer, we're gonna spam delete. All right. Oh, I should have hooked up my mouse. It's okay, we can still do that. I don't think I have mouse in this. Let's find out. Let's find out if we have mouse in this BIOS or not. It's wrong the first time. Second time, it's also wrong. Flip it back around, it's right. Okay, so we need to go to, what's it say? Navigate to chipset, GFX. GFX configuration, I think it is. Okay, integrated graphics controller to forces. UMA mode to UMA specified. UMA frame buffer size to 512. Navigate to advanced. Advanced CPU configuration. IOMMU. Disabled. Yes. F10. Save and exit. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to get up in the closet and grab the spare SSD I have. And then we're going to put it in here. Um, I'm going to have to make a BIOS. I mean, uh, sorry, a Bazite boot stick. I'm not sure that my Bazite boot stick would be the best for this. So let's make a Bazite boot stick. All right. I had to climb up into my, uh, parts bin. I have a, uh, Keoxia, uh, one terabyte SSD. Uh, so it's 5,000 megabytes a second in VME. So not too bad, I guess. That'll be more than enough, I think. Okay, let's uh, let's put our USB stick in there. 
Give this thing some power. All right, uh, I think my IED uh, BC250 is ready to go. All right, there's the first boot in the Bazite. All right, we're gonna boot into desktop mode first because there's some stuff we need to do before we do anything else. We're gonna install the governor. And now we need a pen working version. All right, we're gonna get uh, signed into the Steam account and then we'll go from there. All right, quick update. So the GitHub told me to run the uh, Austri command to pen it. Um, however, that's an outdated command. Uh, I'll put it down in the description, but I ended up running sudo austri admin pen zero. And then uh, I checked it by running austri admin status and it shows everything. What that does is pen a working version of Bazite so you can roll back to it um, in case one of the updates breaks it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get booted into big picture mode, just like it'll boot from the get go. All right, so we are booted into uh, big picture mode for Bazite. So it kind of looks a lot like Steam OS. Uh, go down here to settings. Uh, we're under stable. Uh, you can see we're hosting Bazite, OS Bazite, uh, OS variant, Bazite deck. Yeah, so we still got some things to do. I'm gonna work on doing some overclocking for this and make sure the VRAM is uh, set properly. And then we're gonna build a case for it. But all of that is gonna be in next video and we'll do some gaming testing. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the like if you like this video and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching guys.